I wanted to talk about one of the most influential jurists of the past 70 years, Justice Thurgood Marshall. He was the first African American to sit on the Supreme Court, but as impressive as that fact is, his life was much more than just that fact. So as Juneteenth approaches, I wanted to give you a brief look at this man's impressive life. Thurgood Marshall came from a family of humble means that nonetheless valued education. He was born in 1908 in Baltimore, Maryland. His father, William C. Marshall, was a railroad porter and his mother, Norma W. Marshall, taught elementary school. Marshall completed his undergraduate education at Lincoln University outside Oxford, Pennsylvania in 1930. He applied to the University of Maryland's law school, but the existence of racial segregation at that time prevented his acceptance. Undaunted, he earned his JD at Howard University School of Law in 1933. Marshall established a private practice, but was focused on civil rights from the very beginning of his legal career. In 1936, Marshall began work at the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, also called the NAACP. In just two short years, he was the lead chair of the NAACP's legal office, and by 1940, he was the chief of the NAACP Legal Defense and Educational Fund. Marshall won his first Supreme Court case at just 32 years old. In total, he would argue 32 cases before the court, and he won 29 of those. But of Marshall's victories, without a doubt, his most important was Brown v. Board of Education of Topeka. Brown ended the racial segregation of public schools. Marshall argued and the court agreed that those policies violated the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. This case overturned the 1896 decision, Plessy v. Ferguson. And you may recall that Plessy is the case that established the infamous legal doctrine of separate but equal. That case provided the legal support to the policies of segregation that existed all over the United States. So in helping to overturn that precedent, Marshall stood at the beginning of a new legal era and helped give rise to the civil rights movement. What's more, this case saw the use of the social sciences and statistics as evidence to support a legal argument. This presaged a more modern style that did not rely so overtly on the power of rhetoric or rote recitation of a case's fact pattern. This innovation would turn out to be just as important as Brown's outcome. Now, in 1961, President John F. Kennedy nominated Marshall to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit. However, several Southern Senators, led by Mississippi's James Eastland, opposed his confirmation, and he sat that court under a recess appointment. In 1965, President Lyndon B. Johnson appointed Marshall to the office of United States Solicitor General. He was the first African-American to hold that post, and at the time, he was the highest ranking African-American in the federal government's history. Just two years later, President Johnson nominated him to the Supreme Court and the Senate approved. Marshall sat on the court from 1967 until 1991, a tenure of 24 years. He was decidedly liberal. He himself described his legal philosophy as, quote, you do what you think is right and let the law catch up, unquote. That worldview was informed by his experience as a civil rights activist. He saw firsthand that the law reflects societal beliefs, and as those beliefs change, the law is often slow to mirror those changes. He was a great supporter of individual rights, including the rights of criminal suspects. And in particular, he was staunchly opposed to the death penalty. And as an interesting aside, current Supreme Court Justice Elena Kagan clerked for Marshall. Marshall's personal life was as mundane as his legal career was extraordinary. Justice Marshall was married to Vivian Bury from 1929 until her death in 1955. He married Cecilia Suat in December of that year. He had two sons with Cecilia. Justice Marshall died of heart failure at age 84 on January 24, 1993 at the National Naval Medical Center in Bethesda, Maryland. Today, he is buried at Arlington National Cemetery. When I began researching this topic, I admit I didn't know much about Justice Marshall beyond his being the first African American to join the court. But he was more than just a first, as impressive and historic as that fact undoubtedly is. He was a civil rights leader, a talented attorney who introduced to the court a new means of argumentation and a judicial philosophy that balanced the conservative voices on the court. But I think most importantly, he brought a worldview and a particular American experience that had never before been on the court. And I can assure you, we're going to talk more about this extraordinary man on this channel here in the future. Now, if you learned something here, please give the video a like, a save, and a share, and I will see you again next time.
Take care.